Hello tanks and tankettes, and welcome to the Tier 7 and 8 Contest Results video! Um... Um... Well, okay, maybe not so much. The eagle-eyed among you may have spotted that this is in fact not World of Tanks, and is in fact an entirely different game. Yes, there is a reason. Um, basically, I have been recording and re-recording and doing uh, editing on that, um, the, the results video, for a good chunk of the day, and it's getting on now, and I've got an early-ish appointment tomorrow, so I've realised I'm not actually going to get it finished tonight, uh, because it takes a good two hours to render with the... Uh, well, just on my computer, it takes a good two hours to render. So... What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to live record a bit of footage from another game that I've recently been playing, and I'm going to say that the 7 and 8 contest result is going to be out tomorrow, for definite. But just so that there is a video going out, I, I thought I'd show you a bit of this instead, because I've been playing it a little bit, and it's actually quite fun. It is Barry Lyndon, the game! Yeah, I, I was very tempted to say, uh, it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but you know what, that joke is just too mainstream for me, so instead I had to be me. And I had to make a fairly obscure reference to a film that m possibly most of you won't have heard of, much less seen. But there it is, it's done now, and I'm not going to take it back, so there. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, what it is actually, uh, this is Mountain Blade Warband Napoleonic Wars. It's an expansion for Mountain Blade Warband, it's purely PvP, and basically you jump on a server and you play against other people, or bots, there are modes like that as well and you control a Napoleonic era uh, infantryman or uh, a mounted soldier, a, a cavalryman, or even you can play as uh, artillery. We might get to artillery, we might not, I don't want to make this a particularly long video, but artillery is rather different in this game before you all, all start rolling your eyes. Now, I actually had a go at recording this and there was some technical derpery, so I, I, I created a uh, an account, Caption Guy, because I thought, you know what, I don't mind Caption Guy getting shot at, so that was my reasoning there. <laughs> so there are different kind of game modes, we're just going to go on a siege uh, game because you can jump right into those and you tend to get a, a bunch of respawns. Uh, although we're not actually seeing any right now, oh there we go, the, the filters have hidden a lot of stuff so you can uncheck all this and you can see all kinds of things that you can't actually uh, join I don't think. Now when it says modules it means mods and there are different um, I think there might be mods for this as well. Maybe there are. Uh, I might have to investigate that, actually. That's a thought I haven't had. But uh, what we'll do is we'll jump in a siege, and this one has got a bunch of people on it, as you can see. The servers can be up to 200 people, and that's one of the things that makes this game nice, is that you can have literally hundreds of people on one server all shooting at each other, and it, it can be totally chaotic and wonderful. So we're going to jump in, and um, I did try and do a commander battle in the previous video, uh, the previous attempt at recording this, but it uh, just derped generally, and I've thought I'm slightly running out of time even to record this tonight and get it rendered in time, so we'll click auto-assign. Oh, we're actually on the... oh, well, I, I should have chosen the Brits because I could have taken a bagpiper. You can play as a musician in this if you want to. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna start off as a drummer. Uh, no, we'll go as a fifer. A fifer's... Uh, uh, more fun, I think. There's various different kinds of infantry types. Uh, cavalry, generally not available on siege. There's artillery, that's the sapper, and there's usually one or two other special troop types. Like, for instance, the British get Royal Marines. Uh, but we're going to go, initially, anyway, as a fifer, and I'm going to show you a very nice feature of this game in that you get music. Oh, this match has apparently just been won, so we'll have to wait for the, uh, the, uh, the game to finish and, uh, well, actually, uh, there we go. So, I am going to click this, and if there's a, a musician with a compatible instrument and compatible uh, song list, if I'm playing, he will be playing at the same time. And that's wonderful. You can have somebody, a drummer, playing along with you as you're playing on the pipes, and you'll be playing. he'll be playing the drum accompaniment, accompaniment to this. So I think that's brilliant. That is really wonderful. What other game has anything like that at all? Of course, you don't actually get... Oh, oh, wow, okay, everyone's a critic. What you don't actually get, um, of course, 
is uh, anything other than a melee weapon. But of course you can pick up mu muskets and rifles and whatever that have been dropped by other people. So I'll pick a proper troop... Well, I say a proper troop type. Uh, a troop type that starts off with, uh, uh, you know, an actual gun rather than a pipe. This is another piper! I think we're actually playing the same tune. Which is, uh, yeah, I just think that's a little, it's a wonderful little feature of this game. There is actually a point to this. There are area of effect buffs, essentially, that uh, musicians give. Things like faster marching, faster reloads, um, more accurate fire. And I think there are officer buffs as well. I don't quite know what all the buffs are, to be honest. But I know that they are there. So, walking slowly across this... Uh, Siege ladder. This can only go one way, probably. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> now the first respawn's really quick, but on this particular server, the uh, respawns after that take longer. And it, the, the individual server rules can be there can be quite a lot of variation. So we're just going to run towards the enemy fort, and we're on the besieging side. Uh, initially, that's quite difficult because the enemy walls are obviously going to start off intact. But later on, you can. If our artillery is doing its job, and I'll just check actually who's playing artillery. We have a couple of people playing artillery. So in theory they will be knocking holes in the walls, but also we have sappers who might be able to um, build things to let us get up the walls, like ladders or kind of like um, stakes. Or... Getting to the fort initially can be somewhat tricky, yes. Yes. Uh... <laughs> The thing is with this game, if you get hit, 9 times out of 10, that's it, you're dead. But, if you've got, if you're on flat ground like this, if you can wiggle around and throw off somebody's shot, there's actually a slight delay between you firing and, uh, you know, clicking the fire button and the shot actually going off, because of course you're firing a musket, and it actually has to ignite the gunpowder, which then sends the, uh, the, the musket ball in the right direction. So. It's uh, there's a good chance of dodging on flat ground, but if you are on a, a you know a ladder or if you're in water or you're just on anything or doing anything that slows you down, we'll actually get behind, behind cover and reload first. Uh, it makes you a lot easier to hit, so we'll duck. Doesn't really help that much, but uh, on the other hand, against that is the fact that these guns are horribly art um, articulate. I almost said inaccurate would be a better word. These guns are horribly articulate. Yes. Quite. And that's the only reason that the line infantry tactics of the era actually worked, is you had these massed ranks firing volleys of shots, basically. And there was every chance that uh, uh, the shots being fired at you, you know, even though you were with a line of men, that they hopefully would mostly miss. So we've actually managed to successfully get up to the wall this time. We're going to reload. And it's actually interesting, it, it threw me off a bit at first, but you reload with exactly the same button as you do uh, fire. So you left click to fire, but you also left click to reload. And I kept initially hitting the R key, because there's a lot of games where you have to hit the R key to reload. But uh, not this one. So there's one of our fifers over there. He's just merrily tootling away. Now, if I go back to first person, that might make things slightly easier. You have to really... Pay attention with this game, you have to be on the ball. Whoa, hello! And uh, I got him! Yes, I actually got my shot off first. You actually have to, if, you, if you, you you see there, I mean, you don't even have an aim point. You have a kind of, the aim reticle in this is slightly interesting. In that you know you're going to fire somewhere within it, but not necessarily exactly what you're aiming at. And you don't know exactly what you're aiming at, because there's no central point to the reticle. So. Yeah, these are not the most accurate guns. You're not going to snipe anyone with these things. You can fire in their general direction and hope that you actually hit, but uh, good luck uh, getting any more accurate than that. So we've got a breach in the walls, but actually making uh, taking advantage of the breach is going to be another thing. Now this is a bit risky because I'm perfectly framed here. I'll try and jump off through there. Ah, we've got another breach over here, which is possibly better to try and get through. Might involve less having to jump up. Yeah, there we go. And this is the point where life gets interesting. There's also, uh, you can also melee. Um, oh, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> I don't quite have the controls yet. You can also melee, and if you've got your pr principal weapon, you can hit X. And that, that would then uh, switch to the bayonet, basically. You would bayonet people. 
and uh, other weapons as well. Uh, pistols, I don't know if you can melee people with pistols actually, but rifles you uh, hit people with the butt of the rifle, otherwise you, uh, some troop types carry like swords, sabres, that kind of thing. So, can I, oh, stop moving around, it's by, by far the best way to actually get somebody when they're, uh, or get somebody to miss you, it's just to jiggle around and move and, um, Oh, that'd be a cannon shell. Um, yeah, I took a little bit of damage there. I'm so used to... It took me a second to realise I'm actually still alive. Because generally if something hits you, it kills you. And the number of times you get hit in a battle and actually survive, it might be once. Whoa, there's another cannon shell. I think that actually disrupts my uh, loading process. So we'll get some more solid cover. And it's actually finished reloading. And you can see that I've already, you, you can get, especially if you're meleeing a bunch of people, you can get coated in blood, basically. The blood effects aren't especially realistic or gory, it's just you start to look a lot more red. But it's there! So I'm going to just fire in, uh, oh god, somebody's direction. Maybe I'll hit them, and maybe not. Yay, I did! I actually led enough there. Leading your targets is quite difficult with this. No, I'm actually reloading right now. That's one thing with doing it uh, third, first person, is it's quite hard to tell if you're reloading a lot sometimes. Although it's slightly freaky, because if I uh, hold down the look around key, I can do this! <laughs> it's a bit weird, but anyway. So, we might or might not win. The fact that we've already breached the outer wall is good, but there's still an inner wall to breach as well. And uh, if I can get down... Have some defenders. Oh, that missed. Let's get down behind this tent. I think tents give you solid cover. Not 100% sure. Just hoping more than anything else. And even if there are people that can still potentially shoot at me, it's about as unlike Call of Duty as you can get. That doesn't automatically mean I'm going to die. Because somebody might be shooting at me and just utterly miss. And that missed. The only way you can actually directly tell is to look at the message log in the uh, bottom left hand corner. But you can also bring up the scores and check. And I've killed two people so far, so my kill-death ratio is one so far uh, in, in this particular battle. But you know what? Doesn't matter. On some battle, on some uh, servers you get a limited number of, of respawns essentially, but there's no global stats, there's no progression, there's no unlocks, there's no XP, none of that stuff matters. You just jump in a server and you have fun. And I like any game that does that. So, uh, oh, target rich environment, what do I shoot at? No, missed him. Now, I'm more used to looking for pointy hair Jedi down in the message, uh, the message, the message log. It's late. Don't hold it against me. Uh, normally I don't even have that excuse. And, uh, yeah, but of course I'm looking for caption guy. Like I said, I really don't mind if Caption Guy gets shot. In fact, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm more than fine with that. I'm positively ecstatic. So, ha! Take that, Caption Guy. I know, it's totally petty, but you've got to take the revenge where you can get it. Oh, there we go, another kill. The thing with most of the walls and the, the solid cover in this is that it's not quite enough to totally cover you. Your head's still poking out. You just have to hope that the enemy miss, that it's enough cover. So, yeah, I, I, I talked about Barry Lyndon at the beginning, by the way, and I'm going to mention that slightly, just having mentioned it. It's a film by uh, Stanley Kubrick, and it is utterly gorgeous. I think everybody... Well, it's not going to be to everybody's taste. It's a fairly long film, but it is just a fantastic film. Uh, it's... Uh, as a person who is uh, a photographic enthusiast, shall we say, a, a hobby photographer, what Kubrick did with Barry Lyndon... Well, basically... He wanted to film it all natural light, and if you think about when it's set, at the beginning of the 19th century, when uh, basically the main form of lighting was uh, still candles, or possibly, uh, yeah, you can call out by the way, that's quite a nice feature, uh, or possibly oil lamps if you were, you know, uh, did they have oil lamps by that point? I suppose the whaling trade, when did the whaling trade even start? I don't know, but anyway, it was basically setting fire to something in some form and having it burn in a controlled way. That was the main source of getting light. And if you know anything about filming a film, you'll know that it requires quite a lot of light. 
So for Kubrick to want to basically film by candlelight, that was entirely unprecedented and required uh, quite a lot of hard work. He basically had to get super, super high speed lenses. I think he actually, where did he get them from? Was it like he borrowed some from NASA or somewhere like that? He had to go to, he basically had to invent filmmaking techniques, whole new filmmaking techniques in order to get this to work. And it just looks gorgeous. It's a film that's been filmed by candlelight in places. It's amazing. It's also, I mean, the plot of it, plot of it itself, it's based on, um, I can't even remember, was it Thackeray? I can't remember. Somebody wrote a book and it's based on part of the book. And the actual plot, um, the main character, Barry Lyndon, I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning of this recording of this video, but he starts off at one point, he, he joins the British Army because he's um, Irish, and of course Ireland at that point was uh, under the British. And he ends up through a means that I won't spoil uh, fighting for the Prussians. So. You get to see full, proper line infantry fighting, and it is really well done. Being Kubrick, it will have been really well researched as well. And the whole thing's just gorgeous. I think I just got stabbed in the back, by the way. Yeah, somebody jumped down or whatever. Um, so, it's just, it's not going to be to everyone's taste. It's a historical drama film. It follows the the life of times of Barry Lyndon, essentially. That's so weird, though, being able to do that. But, uh, yeah. I'm possessed, my neck can go all the way around. It's slightly freaky. Imagine if the character models would actually do that. That would be hilarious. But uh, it is just it. I mean, uh, Kubrick made some damn good-looking films, but Barry Lyndon has to be one of his best-looking films. And when it came out, it was initially not that well-received, but later on, you know, as the years have passed, it has become extremely well uh, more regarded as time has gone on. Just people have... Um, I think it was just so different when it came out. People didn't know what to make of it. You know, this this rather odd-looking film in the, the, the lighting looks very different and the, the plot and the pacing are maybe not what people were, would have expected in that era for a... Even that kind of film wasn't especially being made in that era. I think we we're going to win this, by the way. So, it's just interesting on a number of levels, and as time has gone on, as it's aged, um, people have come to regard it better. It's just, yeah. So, Barry Lyndon, go check it out if you like Kubrick films and you haven't seen it, because it is goddamn amazing looking. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, back to the battle at hand. Uh, we are winning, I think. We're nearly at the inner courtyard. It's basically, we need to get enough people around the flag that the flag actually lowers. So this is the point where everyone goes full-on melee. We're, we're all doing the little melee dance. And it can look a bit silly. Everyone's kind of dancing around trying to not get hit, but also hit the other person at the same time. And I'm just going to hang back and... Oh, there we go, I'm getting a... That symbol up there means I'm getting a, a buff by the uh, Piper, I think. The... the Hornist, whatever he is. Uh, can we get anybody? No, missed. Now, well, actually, I'm just gonna at this point switch to my bayonet. We're gonna hang around the flag and we're gonna do a little dance. If anybody comes out and wants to dance with us, and then we'll, we'll oblige them. So basically, once you've uh, closed to uh, quite close ranges, oh, that'll be friendly cannon fire, by the way. The uh, very best thing to do is, uh, there we go, we won, hooray, the flag's down. S screw you, Britain, screw you, Austria triumphant, A-E-I-O-U, yeah, there, yeah, no one will get that, but whatever. Um, we'll call it quits there, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's fun, I just like to jump in and derp around, and if you just screw around and play as a drummer for a whole round, or a piper, or a fifer, it doesn't matter. You can just do silly things, or you can play serious, or it doesn't matter. There's no stats, there's no XP, there's no progression, there's no anything. It doesn't matter, you can just have fun, and I think that's wonderful. And also it's Barry Lyndon the game, so it's got that going for it too. So if you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.